and I love the fact that you do knowledge dumps where all of your team members get together and this is this is what we're seeing across industries. Like who's thriving, who's dying, what advices are you giving on spending and overhead and all that kind of stuff? Well, and that's just it, is that you've got to have your numbers. It always goes back to if I'm going to ask you the question, well, how do you survive? I'm going to start by looking at your business model itself. And so I can't look at the business model if you don't know your numbers, if you don't know that profitability, you don't know that you're able to take things out. What's your operating cash flow look like? And yes, sometimes that means I'm going to give you some homework. Visionaries hate that, by the way. Yeah, homework, <laughs> homework's the worst. I know, but you're the one who's got the vision. <laughs> so you're going to have to be the one to do the work. I'm sorry. Perfect. When it, when it comes to some of this, a lot of the teams I find that we work with, it is team as the number one challenge and the number one expense. And so they're looking at it going, we just came through a pandemic where a lot of people did the great resignation thing. They're not in the workforce. So that made a problem where I had to compete more, pay more in order to actually get the team on board. Now that I've got the team on board and I'm paying them more, my profit margins have shrunk. And now my loans are costing more. The inflate, you know, inflation numbers are going up. I mean, oh my gosh, it's insane. And they are going to want another raise. How do I afford this? Do I have to look at where do I have to cut expenses? Um, that's number one. Is there something I need to do for my own pricing? What's the price sensitivity of what I offer? Okay, great. Um, what are the other profitable pieces that we can wind up pulling? How about strategic relationships? How about referral programs, right? As opposed to always going to ad spend. You know, what are those different elements? And so it depends on the business model, but the team tends to be the number one thing that people wind up paying for. And so really trying to maximize the productivity and the utility of the team. And that doesn't mean work people to death. Right. That means how do we make sure we're making the best choices and putting people where they need to be for success of themselves and success of the company. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to balance two thoughts in my mind right now. And maybe you can give me some coaching on this. Um, and by the way, I think everybody we have on the team right now is like a talent. So I'm not currently dealing with this dilemma, but I have before, you know, thought number one is it is a giant pain in the ass to let somebody go, pay them some type of severance, hire somebody new, take a risk on somebody new, uh, train them up to do the job. You know, you just lose months and potentially tens of thousands of dollars. So I'm trying to balance the thought of like, man, if I've got a B minus to a B plus player, what is the headache involved with letting them go and replacing them? versus like this might be a great time when people are getting laid off or companies are struggling to kind of top grade my talent and substitute a B plus player for an A plus player. You know, they might cost the same. They might cost a little bit more. But as we talked about earlier, if you have A plus players, they pay for themselves because they generate so much more revenue than they cost you. So balancing those two thoughts of like, all right, somebody's watching this right now, they've got some B player talent and they're looking, you know, in the mortgage industry, for example, I've got a loan officer assistant, a processor, an executive assistant, they're good, but not great. They're a B minus to a B plus. God, do I really want to go through the headache of this, in this market of letting them go, bringing in somebody else, hoping that I interviewed correctly and I am top grading to an A plus player and them training them and blah, all the stuff that goes with that versus like, no man, this is the time to upgrade talent and you're going to have to do that to stay profitable during a recession. How do I balance those two thoughts or what's the right answer? I am going to give Chris a link to something that I did for uh, some of my folks called the cost of a mishire. <laughs> so I actually did a video on that. So we'll, we'll give you that over to your, to your listeners to, to take a look at. But if you've got everyone on your team, there's usually a body bottom 10%. Right. Like don't toss out the baby with the bathwater. That doesn't make sense. Right. You've got to do it in ways where, okay, so if you are having a problem with one team member, address that problem because the cost to stick your head in the sand like an ostrich is huge. Even if they're a B player, what's the opportunity cost of not having an A plus player? Right. I'm sure they've done great things. I'm sure there's also costs. Yes, there's investment in making sure the other people come in, although with systems in place and onboarding processes, uh, ultimately you'll have a little easier time getting the next person on board. Right, right. But I'd look bottom 10% first. Bottom 10%, probably get rid of them. You know, it's, it's funny. I talk about this with my team a lot and it's really a matter of hire slow and fire fast. 
you know, I know when I walk into meetings with people, if it's not a hell yes, I love that person. We need a conversation. Right. Because, oh my gosh, why is it not a hell yes? Why am I not in love with that team member? Maybe there's something that's going on with that person right now in their life. Right. Okay. That happens. But maybe they're not a fit. Please don't drag it out for either party. You're as a company, you as the founder, you're going to hate it. And so are they. Yeah. They're not going to see it because they're not going to want to leave because they want the security. But ultimately, if they're not a fit, you're not doing them any favors. Right. 